the Sony TAN1, a masterpiece or just overpriced gimmick. I've been looking for this puppy for about 5 years or so and here we are. Should you be impressed? Well, let's see. It was 1999 and Sony was all about their new SACD, which was supposed to be a successor to the CD. Well, supposed to be. It was a successor, but it was far cry from successful. It completely failed to bring the music to the masses, it was just too expensive and there weren't too many titles for the SACD either. The SACD was the next stage of an audio quality and Sony wanted to release something special together with the SACD standard and that something was the TAN1. Alongside the TAN1, Sony released a pre-amplifier TAE1, SACD player SCD1 and SS1ED loudspeakers. And these were Sony's top high-end audio products just like the TANR1, TANR10 and TAER1 before that. Not only the TAN1 was probably the most advanced high-end product Sony ever produced, but also the last. Since then, Sony gave up on quality products and started producing shit for masses. Before that, Sony was known for their excellent high-end amplifiers since probably 70s, when they made their competition cry with a couple of amplifiers such as TAN8550 or famous TAN7. The TAN7 was Sony's last Vifa temp and some say it's the best amp ever produced, full stop. I'd probably agree to some extent, but I haven't heard this beast yet. So it's gonna be quite a comparison. And I'm gonna compare the prices first. The TAN7 was not ultra expensive hardware. When new in 1977, it cost 160,000 yen or 2400 German marks, which is about 3900 US dollars today. The TAN1, on the other hand, cost in 1999 900,000 yen or 7400 US dollars. And if you can trust these inflation calculators, which I don't very much, it would be about 14,000 US dollars today. The price of the N1 has gone somewhat down in the last 20 years, but they are still far cry from cheap. Unlike the TAN7, Sony made the 70kg monster without any compromise. I have to admit it's one of the most beautiful pieces of equipment I've ever seen. Sony probably put a lot of time and effort, and money, to the development. The build quality is second to none, everything's tight, everything fits, it feels robust and it's massive. Just the lid alone is 7mm thick. What I fancy about the design a lot is that Sony didn't try to hide the screws. They left them about so the amplifier looks sort of industrial but also gorgeous. The back panel is made of copper and is populated with three inputs, one balanced and two unbalanced. Not sure why two of them but here we go, and two sets of speaker terminals. The terminals are pretty good, solid and sturdy, you can fit pretty much anything into them, a simple wire, banana connector or a fork. The front panel is simple and gorgeous, and even more so when you turn the bloody thing on, which you do here. Pushing the power button feels sort of satisfying, it's as solid as the rest of the amp, and after you push it you can hear the familiar relay click and this blue light lights up signifying the amp is ready to use. Massive heat sinks stick out from both sides and they're both effective and nice looking. I'll have a look at the temperatures later on. Now let's take off the lid. And we'll present it with this view. 1.5 kW transformer which seems to be enclosed in some sort of ceramic enclosure. Four fairly large caps are placed here and lots of free space around to give it some breathing space which makes it very neat and clean inside. Sony used 10 pairs of their own MOSFET transistors and slapped them on this hunk of copper, all non-magnetic and gold-plated. Sony made only two amplifiers where they used gold-plated transistors during their lifetime, this one and the TANR10 which is probably even rarer than the N1. The NR10s were made only on an order, so I reckon there's a bit less of them than commercially produced N1s with their 100 pieces. Unlike the NR10 and NR1 which were class A monoblocks, the N1 was class AB stereo amp. Sony probably wanted to cut down the power consumption and also get rid of the heat. That's why they didn't need to use full copper heat sinks like in an NR10 case. And these thick aluminium walls help to dissipate heat as well. Speaking of the heat, she's been running all day long and she's just lukewarm on touch. The warmest bit is right here, which is quite right compared to the VFAT or Class A, and if I check the temperature directly on the transistors, it looks like this. 
As I said before, some say the Sony TN7 is the best amplifier ever produced, and I'm quite interested if the newer TAN1 can outperform her older sister, or more like Nan. For the testing, I'm gonna use Infinity IRS Sigma loudspeakers, and no preamp to make sure what I hear is the actual amplifier. Now, right from the first tones, I'm quite disappointed. It's not exactly what I've expected. To make it clear, she's not bad, far from it, she sounds brilliant for someone who's looking for details and sort of clear sound. I said I'm gonna compare the N1 to the N7, and in terms of sound colour, the N7 is just unmatched. She produces sound so warm, it can burn your eardrums from inside. No, really, it's so pleasant and engaging, you don't wanna stop listening. On the other hand, the N1 has a bit of a colder sound, which is good, but it doesn't make me want to listen to the same track over and over and over again. It's just kinda of perfect, but it's missing the unperfect bit the N7 has. For instance highs, they are ultra detailed, you can hear a ladybug shit, but some instruments like hi-hats or some flutes may sound a bit too harsh or too bright to me. And even though it's not annoying as some amplifiers can make high frequency sound, it's just not smooth enough which I'm used to with the VFAT. Mids are also super clear and super detailed, you can hear everything the track offers, every mistake the guitar player makes, every touch or snag on the guitar string. The sound is, again, just too cold for my taste compared to the VFAT. On the flip side, it's plenty warm compared to the Class D amps. I'd call it somewhat neutral sound, which is not a bad thing, but it's not for everybody, certainly not for me. If you fancy bass though, the TAN1 would be your cup of tea. The bass is really deep, powerful and, again, detailed. Some amplifiers tend to produce sort of mushy or veiled bass, but here it's simply outstanding. If you live in a block of less though, you won't be very popular among your neighbours if you've got speakers like these IRS Sigmas. To make the long story short, it's super detailed in every possible frequency and a bit on a colder side. Where the N1 really shines is stereo and instrument separation, it's, it's astonishing. Instruments don't get smushed together, you can hear pretty much everything, well, separately. It's really extraordinary. What is not extraordinary though, is a soundstage. It's not among the best, it's not as engaging as for instance the Yamaha B1 or the Sony TN7, which fill the room with the sound as if an orchestra is right there with you. And even though the N1 does it significantly worse, it's still rather good. She's definitely one of the best looking amps I've ever seen, and one of the rarest, and her build quality is second to none. This thing is just amazing inside and out, a combination of art, technology and pleasure. Unfortunately, she's not for everybody and I am one of those not everybody. If your thing is deep bass and ultra detailed and clear sound, you'd absolutely love what's coming out of her. I was listening to the N1 for about, for about a month and I sort of got used to the sound she produces, but right after I connected the TN7 back, I was gobsmacked how much better the N7 sounds, to me. That being said, if you fancy warmer sound, don't even think about the TAN1. Since I mostly listen to jazz, some soft vocals or orchestral music, the TAN1 is not my cup of tea. However, for somebody who listens to rock or metal, it would be suited much better. That being said, this monster is still better in pretty much every aspect than most of the newly produced amps. I may make a video about the Sony TAE1 in the future, if I'm lucky to secure one that is. It would be nice to have this combo, even though I'm not totally satisfied with the amplifier. And the same goes for the loudspeakers, but since they are bloody large and heavy, they would be a bit more problematic and pricey. And there you have it, this was a short review and I'm going to work on another, so see you there, cheerio!